So today we have the honor to meet uh, Zahira Kamar, which uh, is a um, Palestinian activist and politician of uh, the Palestine Democratic Union. And in 2003, she was elected as Minister of Women Affairs after becoming the first uh, female leader of Palestine political party. She's used her political position as an opportunity to raise the voice of all women around her country. So first of all, thank you for being here, Zahira. I'm gonna start with the first question. So uh, can you give us kind of a brief insight of uh, your life journey? Hmm. Ah, my life journey is very long. It will take all the time. So <laughs> it is, uh, I will have some uh, uh, spots on uh, my life. Uh, I'm uh, Jerusalem, uh, born in uh, Jerusalem in this house, actually. Uh, uh, the house is built on uh, uh, 1936. Uh, me and all my uh, brothers were born uh, here. Uh, it's, uh, 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 I've been studying uh, in Jerusalem for the uh, elementary and secondary uh, school and, and uh, I did my uh, uh, BA, BSc in uh, Cairo at Ancient University. I studied physics and chemistry and uh, then uh, you know, I, uh, at the Sixth Day War in uh, 1967, I was in e e Egypt still and was not uh, able to come uh, back. I came after my, my graduation on 1968 uh, to uh, Jerusalem with a visit permission. Uh, it was uh, only for uh, one month, but I uh, decided not to leave and I will continue uh, staying here. I was fortunate that I got uh, a job with UNRWA, uh, UN Refugee uh, Working uh, Agency for uh, uh, Palestinian refugees. And uh, so uh, this uh, place uh, where it is uh, any uh, students, uh, women students come to this, uh, uh, play, to this uh, college after they finish their secondary school and uh, uh, it is two years study and they become teachers. But I think this is, uh, that was very important in my life because I start knowing uh, about the life of uh, refugees. And when uh, uh, we have uh, at the college, what's called the host schools, in which the uh, students, they go to the nearest uh, school uh, in the place where they are living and they start uh, uh, yani, uh, uh, trained there to, uh, to be teachers. So we visited them uh, in these schools to uh, uh, evaluate uh, them. And uh, that was an opportunity for me to visit the camps. But it was, uh, yani, before I didn't uh, visit the camps, although uh, yani, there are uh, many camps in uh, West Bank, and uh, we have some of them in my way from Jerusalem to Ramallah, where I was teaching, but I never get in the camp at that time. Uh, you know, I saw it from far. But uh, when I go uh, to the host schools, I have to get in the camp and see the suffering of uh, people, refugee people, the suffering of women who are uh, there with very uh, yani limited uh, opportunities for education, for health, for uh, work uh, and uh, also uh, yani, there are uh, a lot of early marriages, uh, there are uh, uh, violence, uh, yani, whatever uh, you can uh, call, uh, even the uh, standard of life, it is uh, very uh, low, they didn't have uh, uh, services uh, at uh, the camp. So this is, uh, that was uh, my uh, first uh, work. I continued there for 22 years. Then I worked with the UNDP on uh, development. And uh, well, that was also an opportunity uh, that I was open to the, uh, the world, I can say, 
uh, being uh, uh, yani attending uh, different uh, uh, conf international conferences uh, that deals with uh, women life and development and so on so i learned uh, more uh, on that and i start working on that uh, i left uh, after uh, palestinian uh, uh, authority came into uh, power i uh, worked with the, the Minister of Planning and Development, uh, establishing uh, the uh, uh, Gender Planning and Development uh, Department, uh, which was uh, also uh, very good in which what I studied uh, in uh, my uh, work at UNDP, I start practicing it uh, at the ministry uh, with training and uh, all that research, uh, whatever. Uh, after that, I was appointed as a Minister of uh, Women uh, Affairs in 2003, uh, in which also it was uh, yeah, uh, putting uh, in practice and uh, on the table of uh, yeah, decision making the uh, women uh, issues. I bring uh, the women issues from uh, the community to the work. And here I want to say that when I put the strategy of uh, the vision and the strategy of the uh, women uh, uh, affairs ministry, I uh, communicated with the women organization all over West Bank and uh, Gaza. And I uh, discuss uh, the needs of uh, women uh, there. I uh, put it in like uh, five pages in which uh, there was uh, or more, little bit more, to, uh, 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 of which 500 uh, uh, women attended a meeting uh, in which uh, we discuss uh, this, of course, it was uh, not all at one time. Uh, we have some of them, uh, of them on the north, on the middle, and the south, and so uh, and in Gaza, uh, two sessions in Gaza, in which uh, we discussed the issues and improve. I improved this uh, paper, and it was uh, later on submitted to the uh, uh, cabinet, and it was uh, approved. So we uh, we were working together uh, as a governmental and non-governmental uh, organizations and this is uh, and I think it is uh, very few uh, uh, people who do uh, such uh, a thing and uh, uh, they try to communicate it with the civil society on this. Politically uh, I can say that I'm uh, in uh, uh, any after I came back here uh, to uh, uh, any after uh, my uh, graduation in Egypt, uh, and uh, there was the Israeli occupation and so on, and uh, there's no parties. We started to try as uh, any people who are uh, any. Uh, uh, educated and they uh, believe on the uh, same things and so on, uh, uh, how we can struggle occupation, we try to establish what's called the voluntary work. And uh, this voluntary work was very important because you come to know the people more and to work with them and they come to accept you and you build your relation and your, your communication with them, even from starting cleaning the streets uh, in different uh, places, the camps uh, mainly, and uh, uh, making like uh, sewages uh, in uh, the camps, uh, uh, cleaning markets uh, and uh, memorials uh, and uh, all uh, that and in addition to that there was uh, voluntary work in uh, education so teaching uh, people giving uh, like uh, 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 you need to support uh, students uh, young students in uh, some uh, uh, courses like uh, uh, yani Arabic, English, uh, chemistry, physics, mathematics, 
index, uh, whatever. So I was also uh, working uh, on that. And it was good experience uh, when we started our political uh, parties uh, in Palestine. Uh, it was, uh, you have the uh, common ground was uh, built and you can uh, start from uh, there. We started, uh, uh, yani we, uh, I was at that time uh, with the Palestinian Democratic Front and uh, in uh, uh, 1978, we started what's called uh, Women Action Committee. Women Action Committee, it is a volunteer committee. And it is not a charitable society. It, it differs than charitable societies because in charitable societies, you have a building in which uh, the society is there and people come in to uh, do some kind of uh, work or some kind of training and all that. But the programs, it is done by the, uh, uh, um, the board, uh, the board of the society, uh, in the uh, uh, grassroots organizations, uh, we go to the villages and camps, and we try to help them in establishing their organizations in their community. So they decide what they want. It is not that we have one program for all people. It is the program differs from one village to the other, from one camp to the other, according to the needs. And I will tell you at that time, we didn't know what's called uh, need assessment, but we were doing it by practice. Uh, so, uh, after, you know, in the in 90s, when uh, uh, this has been common, uh, like making need assessment in the community for uh, development, uh, I found that we were doing that, yani, uh, but we didn't call it need assessment. But it was even the techniques, it is uh, the same. So uh, I can say that in uh, like uh, I, uh, in one year, uh, we have 3,000 women that they were members on the grass uh, group uh, organization. In uh, later on, we have 6,000 women, and we were looking in '86 to have. 10,000 women as members. So it's uh, in 10 years, you are uh, duplicating the number of women that they are uh, there. And this is because you are meeting, uh, just building your programs according to the needs of uh, women. So you are meeting their uh, needs. Uh, and they trust uh, you. Uh, we are not putting ourselves instead of them, but we are uh, working uh, with them, supporting uh, them to do their, the work they need by themselves and this is I think uh, it's very important because now uh, and we are away of uh, that but they are continue uh, doing uh, it and the program of course uh, varied from uh, uh, like uh, uh, food uh, processing to hairdressing to uh, uh, sewing to uh, uh, any kindergartens uh, uh, any different educational programs uh, liter literacy programs uh, different things and it was very important to tell you that in the 70s when we visited some uh, places the, uh, uh, the percentage of women who are finishing uh, secondary school, it was not uh, exceeding that 18%, one eight, okay? Now, almost 80% of women in these villages, they finishes their secondary school and they go to the universities. Okay, and before, uh, if there is a woman, even in the cities, 
when they go to the university, they didn't study, uh, they didn't go to the scientific stream. Mainly, they go to the humanity uh, streams and uh, uh, social uh, studies. Now, you have uh, you know, the number of, uh, or the you know, percentage of women in uh, some courses like uh, technology, they are exceeding than uh, men. Uh, okay. Uh, if you go to science, uh, pure science, it is even, uh, they are calling it, it is a feminine courses because almost 80% of the students are uh, women. But of course, we have to ask why, because uh, this type of uh, studies, uh, they can, uh, you know, as teach, uh, they can go uh, as teachers. And so when they are becoming teachers, they uh, uh, have three months as uh, uh, summer uh, school uh, vacation, and they go back to their homes early. Uh, so they are with their children at uh, home. So they like uh, teaching. Uh, with the computer science, you can have your own business with the computer uh, science, so they can do it uh, without needing to find a job, a special job, so you can do uh, the work. Of course, that, that that's not only this, it's not limited to that. Uh, it is also in engineering, in health caring, uh, you know, uh, doctors, uh, women doctors are uh, now almost uh, 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 yeah, around uh, 40 percent uh, in engineering, it is exceeding them 30 percent uh, uh, of students. So uh, things are changed a lot since that time, and that's because we had a lot of work uh, done uh, before in convincing uh, families, uh, parents, to uh, uh, be aware about the study of their uh, students. On uh, in, uh, 1992, uh, FIDA was uh, established and I was one of uh, those who established uh, that party. And I've been uh, part of the negotiating uh, team uh, in Washington. Uh, the, but I wasn't part of Oslo. Uh, agreement uh, actually uh, it's uh, uh, this uh, yani it was done in uh, another track yani also agreement uh, but uh, that also uh, helps me in uh, being uh, yani knowing more about the politics uh, what it is done how it's uh, uh, it works uh, I ran uh, for the election on 1996, but uh, because of the system that uh, we have, the electoral uh, system, although I got the votes, but I wasn't part of the parliament because uh, according to the law, uh, there should be two uh, questions uh, from Jerusalem. And my, uh, I was getting uh, uh, any, uh, my uh, in race racing. Uh, it was the seventh uh, member, and because there uh, was only one Christian, and according to the law, there should be two. So they have to bring the other Christian. Although I have uh, more than two thousand votes, more than him. Okay, so he came in and I'm not there. But uh, and it, it was okay. I uh, go back to my work at the Ministry of uh, Planning and uh, uh, I was happy with that. On 2003, I was appointed as a Minister of uh, Women Affairs. Uh, in 2011, I was elected uh, as the chairwoman of uh, the FIDA party. So I will stop here. <laughs> of course, now I'm uh, retired uh, from all of the work. There is, you know, during that, 
there is a lot of uh, organization that uh, I was uh, establishing with uh, some of my colleagues as a uh, women uh, studies uh, center in Jerusalem uh, in 1989. Uh, in 1991, uh, uh, there was uh, the uh, uh, in 1990, uh, it is the Women uh, Center for Legal Aid and Counseling. Uh, and I, on uh, uh, 1992, it was uh, Women Affairs Technical uh, Committee. In 1996, it was ASALA, which is uh, a development uh, organization uh, uh, lending uh, 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 giving some uh, uh, money uh, to uh, women uh, 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 to lend them uh, uh, so they can uh, start their uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, it is supporting entrepreneurs. So I think this is uh, yani a long way uh, where I uh, uh, go. And, uh, you know, of course, it wasn't uh, easy. Uh, where uh, I have uh, some difficulties uh, on that uh, because, you know, even when you want to work with people, we are different uh, from each other. And uh, being different, uh, you have some uh, different ideas, uh, which is accepted, not accepted. Uh, so you have some, uh, 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 what we call it, uh, it's... Uh, some conflicts, some... Uh... Some conflicts, yani, sometimes, yes. Uh, but it is very important to how you direct the conflict so you are not uh, yani, uh, ruining the organization. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. It's, it's really nice and it's super nice to, to really know you in depth. Uh, if I if I can ask you another question, like since you're addressing more maybe on the the woman of Palestine, if you have to have a key message uh, to that you want to share with with us, wh what would it be? Uh, you know, uh, I can say that. Uh... There are many, actually uh, many things to uh, talk about. Uh, you know, uh, it, perhaps the story of establishing a Women Center for Legal Aid and Counseling. Uh, and as I said before, it is uh, how you can, uh, you know, when you listen uh, to people and when you have an eye to look at uh, their uh, needs, you can uh, make something uh, in you. Uh, you know, uh, in Jerusalem, uh, one of our programs uh, was uh, kindergartens. And at the kindergarten, uh, there was a kid that all the time he has infections on his ear. And the doctor uh, who comes uh, yani, uh, often to uh, the kindergarten to check the kids, uh, he was saying, Yanni, I don't know, this uh, child, he has some problem and you have to call their parents. So we called the mother. Uh, we called first that child. Why you have this uh, all the time, uh, the infection, and you are getting medicine and so on? Uh, did you put anything in your ear? Did you uh, try to play, yani, to, uh, to do yani, anything wrong? Uh, some people do it for you. So uh, uh, he said, no, but my mother beats me on my ear. And so we called the mother. And, and she said, you know, his father beats me and I beat the child of the father who beats me. It is like at a moment, she is not looking at him as he is her son, but it is his son who beats her. He is very like his father. His feature is like his father because the other children, it is, she is not doing the same with them. So 
we discuss, of course, uh, with her and we try to uh, any help her in uh, getting away of this situation. But at the same time, we said that, you know, this is terrible. We have to discuss it more. Uh, and we invited 80 women thinking that perhaps we will have like 50 coming because usually uh, half of the people they might come 60 percent of people they come the others they didn't come but you know we when we were inviting we said that if you want to bring someone with you that you know they have a problem uh, yeah, let them come with you and we find that we are coming with 120 women coming to the uh, meeting okay so we start discussing if they they know about cases uh, of women that they are uh, uh, subjected to violence and they start telling us a story of their neighbor something that they heard about uh, and so on later on after perhaps an hour or an hour and a half there they were talking about themselves with crying and so on so the meeting uh, we were uh, yani, making it like from 10 to 3 o'clock because we have uh, curfews at that time uh, uh, it was during the first intifada so uh, uh, they sit in until five and after the, the curfew was there, but they didn't want to leave. So we stay till five and we come that we have to establish a center that support women who are sub subjected to violence. And I think from that time till now, the center is working very well and it is submitting uh, laws to the parliament uh, and making like uh, advocacy for the, these uh, laws and uh, there are shelters uh, that uh, it is uh, uh, supported by uh, uh, the, uh, the center and uh, you know they are um, supervising the team who are working on these uh, shelters so this is something that i really uh, want to share the other thing it is like you know we have the first intifada and the second intifada and uh, there are many people uh, that they lost their uh, children and uh, husbands, uh, fathers, brothers, uh, uh, their houses were demolished and uh, so on. So, uh, 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 of course, uh, uh, women, when they are in such situation, they are very depressed. Uh, uh, they are, uh, 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 you know, they have this, uh, uh, they are uh, 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 depressed and uh, angry about uh, the whole thing about the situation. They did. Uh, they didn't. They become not caring for uh, the family, the whole family, they, because they feel that uh, yani the one that they love and so on has gone and so on. Yani a lot of problems. And we go to support these women. When uh, you talk to them, they said that, you know, ah, you are talking your, uh, your hands in a cold water, but our hands are in the hot water. You didn't know our suffering. So we start uh, trying to uh, find some women from them uh, to uh, help them getting out of this depression and to support others. So when they come to support others, uh, all of them, they ha their hands are in hot water. So uh, they, uh, no one can say that it is in cold water. And at the same time, we try to find what are the strong points on these uh, women. So uh, trying to support the strong points, if she, is, uh, she can uh, 
you know, she have an imagination and she can write uh, poetry or stories or su such things. So we can have some person to support her in developing uh, this creativity that uh, she had and we publish the first book that uh, she had. If they are able to uh, train others, uh, women, so they are uh, supported with training uh, techniques and how to do uh, that. In addition, how to tell their stories telling their stories, what is the technique that they can use in telling their stories. So instead of us going, instead of them outside or with meeting with the important people who are coming to Palestine and uh, to the uh, people, uh, to the leadership and talking about uh, their situation. So they are talking themselves about their own situation. And this is very important because this is give them the support that uh, the, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, they become uh, uh, strong and the personality is becoming also uh, uh, very uh, strong uh, personality. So I think this is very important to share with you. Thank you very much. I, I was really touched about the story of uh, the young child. Uh, I think it's it's really amazing what you you has you yeah. have been able to do. Um, I think maybe Stephanie has uh, another question. Yes, because you you actually just gave us a beautiful, I would say, example of how a crisis can also lead to an opportunity. Let's say. Um, Unfortunately, those women were subjected to violence, but you managed to create a center and to give them a place of hope, I would say. And well, it's now February 2021, and we have just experienced a year of, I would say, a global crisis. And I was just wondering how, how do you, did you experience that? Do you see, uh, some sort of opportunity there in this kind of crisis some sort of breakthrough or new paradigm that might may can come yeah. out of this um yes yeah maybe let's talk a bit about that okay uh, you know uh, i can say that in uh, the first intifada uh, i didn't tell you that i was uh, you know before the first intifada i was because of my activities I was uh, in prison, uh, administrative, uh, 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 it is uh, uh, administration detention, uh, in which, uh, you know, sometimes you didn't have a trial. Uh, you are in uh, prison and, uh, you know, because I'm from Jerusalem, uh, I have a trial, but sometimes uh, they didn't, uh, they put me out of the, uh, the room and they discuss my case in, out of my presence. Uh, just it is to extend the uh, period of uh, uh, detention. But also it was for me an experience because being in a prison, it is very important to see what the uh, soldiers uh, do with prisoners, uh, how the prisoners are living their life, how strong they are uh, becoming, how they manage the time that they are in uh, prison. They make it as a school, yani Palestinian prisoners make the prisons as school because they are teaching uh, each other, uh, they teach uh, uh, each other languages, uh, they uh, study did uh, different things and uh, for me I was uh, uh, you know uh, of course there are uh, uh, some uh, when they are uh, uh, trialed uh, uh, they have to work for me because I uh, on administrative detention uh, they tried to take uh, to force me to work but I refused I said I didn't want to work so I've been closed in the room for 23 hours uh, I have only one hour to go outside the room uh, in which uh, uh, you know, the other woman uh, you know, I go to outside without anybody 
in uh, the field uh, of uh, the prison be because uh, they uh, let me go out uh, at the time that other women are in uh, at work. Uh, so I'm uh, only there just to uh, breathe and so on. But I tried to uh, read. I said that I have many things that I didn't read and I, did, I need the time to read. So I start reading uh, different books that I feel that I want to uh, read them. Uh, that was uh, an opportunity. Of course, uh, the communication with the uh, woman there, some of them, they are very young uh, and so on. Some of them, they spend a lot of time in uh, prison. Uh, uh, they didn't know what's going outside. So we have uh, uh, discussions on uh, that. And the way that uh, it is done, that sometimes uh, uh, they, uh, you know, some of the prisoners, they said, you know, they want to prison themselves in the room to close themselves in the room with me okay so they did go out uh, at the time that uh, any of the others in, uh, are out so we use that time then in discussing different uh, issues and uh, so on uh, or, of course, that was an experience uh, to me uh, how uh, the intro uh, uh, um, Interrogation, uh, uh, it goes how you deal with the interrogators uh, and uh, so on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel as a politician, it was uh, very important. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you that after that, uh, when I uh, go out, I was under uh, also uh, house arrest, uh, town arrest, uh, in which I was not able to go out of Jerusalem. And this is from uh, sun, from sunset to one hour after sunrise. So I have to be all the time uh, at that time at home. And in the morning, uh, I have to uh, go to the police station to sign in at 7.30. At 2.30, I have to go to uh, also to the police station to sign in. Uh, at night, uh, and after uh, you know, sunset, uh, the police come to my home at any time to see if I am at home or not. So, which means that you are all the time in prison. And of course, I wasn't allowed to go to my work in Ramallah at the beginning. And of course, many people, they are dismissed from their work because they are not able to, uh, to do that. What I do, it's, you know, the first day they give me the order of uh, admi the uh, admi administrative town arrest. I uh, went to Anarwa offices. I said, I need a desk here. I want to sit here and do my work from here. And said, they said, you are a teacher. You have to go to your college. I said, I'm not able to go my to, uh, college, but I will teach in far, from far. And they said, how you can teach from far? You are teaching physics. How you can teach physics from far? I said, I will do it. And I think I was doing what is needed now under the... I, <laughs> <laughs> they do it with the Zoom now from the, uh, what we call it, epid epidemic uh, of COVID-19. Uh, everyone is uh, studying from uh, far. So I was doing that long time ago and I was teaching physics in uh, that. And I learned from that experience how I can, uh, you know, make the concept as smallest as I can, so I can start from the beginning and build up on uh, that so uh, my students can understand even without me. And I was taking a permission one day a week to go and uh, to the college and try to make uh, running periods, uh, one after uh, the other with my students, uh, trying to discuss the problems that they find in uh, their uh, study. And it was a very good experience. Even I was using it after I finished uh, my uh, 
detention. And, uh, uh, you know, I find that they, uh, it is a very important thing because when uh, students come to, under, to teach themselves from uh, far and they depend on cell, uh, themselves, it is much important than I'm doing that in, instead of them, but I can support them when they need, but they can do, uh, do it on uh, their own. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, something that it is very needed globally uh, or during that time, uh, different uh, Israeli women, they came to visit uh, me and to show their support. And uh, after that, uh, there was, uh, 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 what's her name? I will remember. Uh, you know, she's uh, from uh, Belgium. Uh, oh. uh, so uh, she, she tried to uh, support also from Italy in the beginning, uh, Luisa Morgantini. Uh, she's uh, a leader, uh, woman leader in uh, trade unions. Uh, she came with a group of Italian women to see if there is uh, something that can be done between Palestinian and the Israeli women, how we think about solving uh, uh, the uh, issue. And we came with some points that we agree uh, upon. And I think it is much, much better uh, from uh, Oslo uh, agreement. I hope that uh, women are in, uh, do the dialogues because they can come with something that it is very strong and it is uh, accepted. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, we go to Belgium and uh, uh, there uh, uh, also uh, we establish, uh, it was uh, the discussion of establishing a center which is uh, 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 what's called uh, uh, you know, it is a center in which uh, Palestinian and Israeli women are working together, but each one on their own to make, to make a model about uh, how can Jerusalem uh, be uh, the issue of Jerusalem, how to be solved. So we are talking about, uh, you know, Two, two sensor centers that they are working independently. And then there is an umbrella who is dealing with the uh, issues that it is in common with each other. Uh, after that, there is uh, the uh, woman uh, who are uh, an international uh, uh, a uh, woman working for uh, just peace between Palestinians and uh, Israeli women. And we have like 20, 20, 20 Israeli, 20 Palestinians and 20 uh, international uh, women in which we work. But there, uh, after working for some years, we find that, you know, uh, if you are, uh, any, uh, there is no trust, you cannot continue. Uh, at an, on 19, uh, on 2010, uh, there was a war against uh, Gaza, and we find that women who were with us uh, in the uh, uh, on this uh, center, uh, they vote for the war against Gaza in Israel. So we said we are working for peace, and you are voting for uh, war. So. Uh, we have to uh, finish that uh, uh, organization. Uh, but during, you know, before it was uh, in 1994, uh, perhaps, or 95, uh, you know, something like this, we go together to Sarajevo uh, in order to support women uh, who are 
suffering from the war uh, between Serbia and uh, Czech and uh, all that. So uh, we were going from one place to the other, uh, trying to support uh, women. So, uh, you know, on the international uh, community, yes, uh, we can do something. And I think there are some women from our uh, uh, group, uh, they are uh, like uh, Sama Weda. She is going to, uh, she went to Syria and, uh, 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 you know, or uh, women from Syria and Iraq, they come to Jordan and she supported them in doing the same work that it is done with, uh, uh, with women uh, here to uh, go and do it with their, uh, with women in Syria and uh, Iraq after uh, 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 Daesh has uh, been uh, doing all uh, the crimes against people uh, there. Is that okay, uh, Stephanie? Yes, very interesting, very enlightening. <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, since we're doing um, this interview in the name of Home for Humanity, and you just talked about your home arrest, I was wondering what does home mean to you? What is the notion of home for you? And of course, if you have some anecdotes to Home for Humanity, um, that would be great to hear as well. Okay. I think home uh, for me, it is uh, the support, the love, first of all, uh, the support, the solidarity, the cooperation, because you know, this house had witnesses, witnesses the establishment of all the centers that I talk about. Even we started some of them here. Uh, you know, it is small. We have here uh, uh, three rooms and this uh, uh, in a sitting uh, room in which we are using it as a sitting room and dining room. But we, we th yani think that it is the biggest house in the world because you know sometimes you have a lot of people uh, sleeping here it is the family home uh, also we are a big family uh, we are eight uh, sisters uh, and brothers uh, six sisters and two brothers and uh, we have grandchildren now uh, that uh, they are coming yani, uh, yeah. Also, uh, their children are becoming, you know, fathers and grand. Uh, so, uh, I can say that, you know, my mother uh, witnessed 80, 83 members of the family. Can you imagine? Because you know, the sisters they are married they have children uh, you know some of them they have six uh, others they have four they have five they have three two and each one married and have also uh, children and uh, so uh, my mother witnessed uh, their marriages uh, all of them uh, the marriages of almost all her grandchildren uh, and uh, uh, witnessed the uh, birth of the grand grandchildren. So, uh, and this is a support. And I can tell you, one of the, uh, 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 the children, the grand grandchildren, when they come to our home, they were running to uh, see my mother. And she, you know, my mother at the end of her life, the last five years, she was not moving. And uh, we, are, we were taking care of her. My sister, she is a physician uh, doctor, but she resigned because she wanted to be with my mother. And uh, I uh, minimize my uh, work to the yani, very minimum. Uh, I go only three days to Ramallah. The other days I was with my uh, mother caring for her. Yani, we didn't have a nurse at home and she doesn't have any problems, uh, infections. 
uh, on her back, on uh, her body, and uh, so on. And even when we take her to the hospital, they were calling the nurses to see uh, her body, how no infection at all. And uh, it is caring. My sister, Randa, she was also uh, retired and uh, she, doesn't, she didn't want to find another work in order to take care. And other sisters who are teaching, we were making like uh, me or Randa are, because we are living with my mother. So uh, almost we are uh, there, one of our, us at least is there. And the others, they are coming, even my brothers, are taking also, uh, they are, have part of the schedule because sometimes you didn't need just to change for her or uh, make uh, any bath for her or whatever. You need to talk with her. So she was 93 and she was with full consciousness because we are all the time talking with her. And we try sometimes to find any, to, uh, to say that we didn't know, mom, mom, what to do. Can you tell us how to make this cooking? Can you tell us how you make uh, this netting uh, design? Tell us about, you know, I didn't remember the name of that person, so we show pictures. Can you remember that person in the picture? Can you uh, remember the occasion of it? So all the time, we are talking, we are bringing her conscious uh, back. So uh, she was full of life. Uh, and uh, yani I can say that uh, yesterday I was uh, talking about the event uh, on 7th of, of March uh, on uh, uh, Home of Humanity. Uh, uh, and uh, I was... Uh, telling uh, one of my colleagues, what do you think about, you know, it was uh, on phone because, you know, people are not able to come to Jerusalem. So he was telling me that, you know, your home it is a home of humanity. Your home is a home of security. Uh, people are, uh, you are, uh, and even we are un under occupation and the police comes in and so on. So it is not that we are afraid of people coming to our, uh, to our home. We are afraid uh, about them. We, are, we want to care, take care of them so are not, they are not uh, having any uh, problem. Uh, my mother, when she was cooking, she doesn't cook for uh, the family, uh, our uh, family. She was cooking because uh, la, 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 uh, there some, uh, might somebody comes and uh, so I didn't want to find that it, we didn't have anything to, uh, to feed them. So we cook uh, a lot. If uh, nobody comes, we can eat it later. So, uh, uh, Yanni, home is, uh, Yanni, when you have love at home, we have, when you have a trust and respect uh, of each other, it is becoming a, a house that it attracts other to come in to that uh, home. And uh, Yanni, they find, uh, fun, they find uh, education, uh, they find uh, knowledge. Uh, we have a big, uh, actually big, big uh, library uh, at our home, but it is uh, above. So they can uh, come and uh, deal with all uh, these uh, things. So I think it is uh, yani home. Uh, I feel uh, secure uh, at my home. I feel that uh, at any time I need the uh, support, I find the support, even our neighbors. Yani, uh, it is uh, yani, uh, uh, they can uh, come to uh, support you uh, and you support them. So it is uh, uh, yani, uh, something that it is. Uh, uh, reversible uh, between uh, people. So uh, when I visited uh, Rama and uh, Alexander at their home, uh, home, uh, home of humanity, I feel that this is something that I know 
uh, about it, uh, home of humanity, how uh, love and uh, support and com community uh, uh, commitment, uh, uh, trust uh, is there. So uh, I think this is uh, what is meant by uh, home of humanity for me.